Welcome to investigation number six of course two. This is a very important investigation. It is about classifying quadrilaterals. We're going to classify them by their characteristics. We're going to use a Venn diagram to illustrate relationships among them and we're also going to draw lines of symmetry. All right, let's get started. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of parallel sides. So know that a parallelogram has nothing to do with shape. It has to do with the fact that you have sides that are parallel to each other. And you have two pairs of those. Right? So this is not a parallelogram because these two right here are not parallel. They don't they face towards each other, which makes them not parallel. A rhombus has all four sides of equal length. So, right, that would be a square is a, a regular quadrilateral. It's also a, a rhombus. This is a rhombus. These are not. These are not rhombuses because you do not, this is longer than this, and this is shorter than this. A trapezoid is quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides, then the others don't matter. So, this is parallel to this, so that makes it a trapezoid. These are not. This is parallel to this. These are not. So these are trapezoids. These are not trapezoids because they do not have a pair of parallel lines, or at least one pair, only one pair. This one does have parallel lines, but you'll notice it has two sets, which makes it a rhombus. This one here, not even close. So it's important that you know the definitions. A trapezoid is one pair. A rhombus is four sides of equal length, and a parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. So, remember clear back to lesson 18 that there's four-sided polygon, that a four-sided polygon is a quadrilateral. So, looking at these right here, all of these right here, see if you can answer these questions below. Which figures have four right angles? And there's only two. See if you can find them quickly. They are A and C. That's this one and this one because they have the right angles. Okay. Number two, which figures have four sides of equal length? There's only two, two of those. Four sides that have equal length. There's some that look a little bit more like they do. Um, the drawings aren't that great. I mean, B looks a little bit like it is, but it's not. Your answer is C and D. Which figures have two pairs of parallel sides? Well, E doesn't, F doesn't, G doesn't, but A, B, C, and D all have two pairs of parallel sides. Which figures has just one pair of parallel sides? There's only one answer here. It only has one pair of parallel sides. That's figure E. And five is which figures have no pairs of parallel sides? Well, that would be these F, F, and G here. They have no parallel sides. And then six, which figures have two pairs of equal length sides? So a little bit tougher. A does. B has two pairs of equal length sides. C has two pairs, two sides with equal lengths. D does also. And one more of these three has two pairs of equal side lengths. And that's G, because this is the same length as this, and this is the same length as this, so it's got two sides of equal lengths. So this six is A, B, C, D, and G. All right, so which figures above there have two pairs of equal sides? Two pairs of equal length sides. Okay, so we can we can sort equilaterals by their characteristics. So which of the figures 
Um, one way to sort is by the number of uh, pairs of parallel sides. So a quadrilateral has two pairs of parallel sides, and that's a parallelogram. So here are shown four par parallelograms. So these all have two pairs of parallel sides. Which of the figures, A through G up here, are parallelograms? It's A, B, C, and D. A quadrilateral with just one pair of sides is called a trapezoid. It only has one set of parallel sides. So the figures shown below are trapezoids. And, and can you find the parallel sides? They don't have to be the same length. They just have to be parallel. So the parallel there, parallel there, and these two here are parallel. That's a trapezoid. A trapezoid has just one pair of parallel sides. A parallelogram has two pairs. So which of the figures A through Z is a trapezoid? Looking up there at it. Having one pair of parallel, parallel sides, it is going to be E right here. That is our only trapezoid up in that group up there. Okay. A quadrilateral with no pairs of parallel sides is called a trapezium. Here we're shown two examples. So which figures are A through Z up here would fall into that category? Well, it would be F and G are trapeziums. We can sort quadrilaterals by the lengths of their sides. If the four sides are the same length, the quadrilaterals are equilateral. An equilateral quadrilateral, quadrilateral is a rhombus. A rhombus is a type of parallelogram. Here we have the two most common examples right here. You take a square and you kind of shove it over, and it still has equal sides. It just kind of slants over. So in 10, if you go up here, which of these up here are rhombuses? Be C and D. C and D are rhombuses. All right. We can sort quadrilaterals by the measuring of their angles. If the four angles are equal measure, then each angle is a right angle, and the quadrilateral is a rectangle. A rectangle is a type of a parallelogram. Which of the figures up here are rectangles? It would be A, obviously, and also C. C would also be a rectangle, even though we call it a square. All right. This is just a diagram to kind of uh, to help you see how everything fits together. So you start here where quadrilaterals, then we have the trapeziums and the trapezoids, rhombuses. Notice your rectangle and square here um, fit together. Square can be a rhombus, rhombus. It can also be a, a rectangle. So notice that a square is both a rectangle and rhombus. A square is also a parallelogram. Everything, uh, a rectangle is a parallelogram. A rhombus is a parallelogram. All three of these are also parallelograms. So they fit inside the par parallelogram circle. Any figure that's within that circle labeled rectangle is a parallelogram as well. Any figure within the circle labeled rhombus is also a parallelogram. So as we drill down, they, they, they all fit into those categories. So see if you can draw a Venn diagram on your paper and then looking. Uh, seeing if you can begin this at the A, B, C, and D, and I put them up here. Looking at these ones here, see if you can draw each of the quadrilaterals in the Venn diagram in the proper location. One of the figures will be outside of the parallelogram category. So start by just drawing a big old circle like this here on your piece of paper, and that circle is going to be uh, parallelograms. And then you're gonna to have to have then you can have another circle and another circle. Like that. And then see if you can put A, B, C, D, and E into all of those. Uh, you don't need to do F, you don't need to do G. Just see if you can do A, B, C, and D and E. 
and put them in the right spots. And when you do, that's what it should look like. Okay, so you should have A should be in here. That's a rectangle. C is your square. That would go right there. D is a rhombus, and it would go right there. And B, B up here, that's a parallelogram. Could also categorize as a rhombus. It could do that too. And then outside here is E, which doesn't it is not within the, the Venn diagram. All right. This you can just do yourself. It's just to show you that if you were to do this and you take your square here and then you just shift it, it turns into this. I mean, it's uh, two angles become obtuse and two angles become acute. It's still it's still the same. It's still got the same shape. It's just off to the side. You still have your your same angles. So if you take those rectangles, straws, and pipe cleaners, and then the student reverses the position of two of the straws, and he changes this from this to this, now, now you get a, a trapezium. Uh, it changes it. It changes it quite a bit. And this is your rectangle here. If two sides of a kite are two feet and three feet, what's the perimeter of the kite? So look at 17 and 18. See if you can do those. 17, which of the figures A through G from the beginning of the investigation is a kite? Well, we all know that's G, right? That's G. So this one here is the kite. Now, if if the two sides were, were two feet and three feet, what would the perimeter of the kite be? Well, it would be 10. Right, because you'd have two and three and two and three, and that would equal ten. I think you guys can do that. Pretty easy stuff. All right, notice that a kite has a line of symmetry. Draw a kite and show its line of symmetry. Draw a rhombus that is not a square and show its line of symmetry. Can you draw a rectangle that is not a square and show its line of symmetry? And can you draw a rhombus that is a rectangle and show its line? See if you do these four and then continue the then continue the video and see the answers. And then for number 19, which isn't there, you have your kite like this, and then your symmetry is going to be right there on your kite. Okay, below we classify the figures illustrated at the beginning of this investigation. You may refer to them as the as you answer the main problem. So, using these up here, up top, up here, answer the answer true or false and state the reason for each answer. A square is a rectangle. Is that true or false and why? That's true. A square is a rectangle with four equal sides. All rectangles are parallelograms. True or false? True. All rectangles have two pairs of parallel sides. And number 29, some, some parallelograms are rectangles. True or false? True, some parallelograms have four right angles. And 30, draw a Venn diagram. We've already done that, so you don't need to do that. And then uh, number 28, some squares are trapezoids. Is that true or false? Well, that's false because all squares have two pairs of parallel sides, and trapezoids have only one pair of parallel sides. So 28 is our only false question. All right, here's your tickets in the door. Submit the answer to these three problems, 31, 32, and 33. Thank you for watching this investigation. I know it's a lot. To take in a lot of shapes, a lot of definitions. Uh, we'll be going over this a lot in the future, but it's important that you practice them. Thank you.